this video is to give you a little bit more information about the different crochet colour change techniques that you can use to work with our Summer 21 Toff Quarterly magazine. So this is a very, very exciting issue. What you've got inside is six interchangeable um, charts for animal prints that you can use across lots of different designs, both knit and crochet. And that means that as you're doing these things, because some are um, classic toys from the Ed's Animals range, some are hats and headbands and things that you're going to wear, what you're going to want to do is use some slightly different crochet techniques suited to the project that you're doing. So just to give you an example before we continue, this is obviously the giraffe chart, and this is worked on a knit version of the hat, and this is worked on a crochet version of that hat. But when you're wearing a hat, so when you're crocheting something that you're going to be putting on your head, rather than leaving the usual floats, you might want to experiment with some different techniques that will actually um, mean that you've got no floats and ends on the inside of your work. So there's nothing to trap your fingers in um, when you are wearing a piece. So I'll go through the four different techniques that you can use um, in order to help you on your way and the pros and cons of each. So what I've got here is just a sample piece that will show you all the different techniques and I'll talk through when you might want to use the different colour changing techniques. So the first one I'm going to do here, I've got 16 stitches, so 4, 8, 12, 16, and I'm using my classic stranded technique. So this is when, um, certainly within the magazine, when you're doing your ocelot, which is the new Ed's Animals pattern, this is the technique I'd recommend for that. And that's just leaving your non-used yarn on the back of the piece as you go along. So what I'd be doing is doing one, two, three, and then in my fourth stitch of camel, at the point where I've got two loops on my hook, I'd swap and I'd pick up my cream to go back like that. And then I do again in my cream, my camel's now lying on the wrong side of my work. And then in my fourth stitch of cream, I'll go back and I'll pick up my camel. And you see that the strands just fall onto the wrong side of your piece and sit there nice, um, nice and neatly, but not affecting what you're doing because they are on the wrong side. And when you're making an animal, you're obviously putting stuffing inside. So there's no, um, no one will ever see the inside. There's no need to worry about them any more than just putting them um, neat and tidy away and make sure that they're not um, affecting the fabric. So the next one I'm going to show you is very, very different to that. It's the other extreme. So what we're doing on this one is we're actually going to be holding the strand that we're not using along the top of the stitches and crocheting around it. So do you see, effectively, these floats here that we've got, they're sitting in the middle. Now, the upside of this technique, and this is the one that I'd recommend for the hats, really, that we've got in this issue. This technique, the upside is the fact that you've got no floats on the inside, so it's lovely and smooth, especially if you're making something, maybe not so much with a hat because your fingers aren't going through it, but certainly if you're making wrist warmers or if you're going to make a jumper sleeve or something like that that uses colour work, sometimes it can be nice to not have those floats, so you're not ever worried about your fingers going into them or, or catching on them. The downsides of it for me is you can still see a little bit of that strand coming through. So this is why I don't recommend it for animals is because you can still see it a little bit coming through. That's not a problem. Like obviously you can see it less on the right side than you can on the wrong side. Um, it's not a problem, I don't think, in these designs, but for my Ed's animals, I still find it easier to do this original technique. It does also make a denser fabric is the other thing to be aware of. So your tension can get quite tight using this technique. So let me just show you, so I'm gonna, in my fourth stitch of my cream, in exactly the same way as normal, I would pick up my camel, so exactly as I was doing before. But what I need to do is make sure that I'm holding the strand that I'm not using across the top of those stitches. So then what I'll do is I'll go into that next stitch along and I'll work it on top around that cream one, like that. So there's my third one and my fourth one, pull it tight a little bit so it disappears on the inside. Um, in fact, what I've forgotten to do there is swap to my next colour. So obviously, again, is the standard um, colour change that we recommend on the fourth one or the last stitch of that colour. What you'll need to do is pick up your cream and then again, lay your camel and go around that one for your next four. So one, two, 
three and then in the fourth one we'll be swapping back to the camel so finish that stitch off pull that nice and tight so it sits underneath lay your cream on top again and you're off doing the repeat so um that's the one that i would recommend for the hats um in particular but certainly if, if you're looking at future projects beyond this magazine it can be a really good one if you are doing um garments and things like that places where um you're putting stuff onto your body and it might be easier to not have the floats so the next one i'm going to show you is probably the one that involves the most um faff uh, probably the longest uh, time to do and this is actually cutting and knotting the color changes now this is something that i wouldn't recommend here we go, I've just done that one, that I wouldn't recommend for doing normal Ed's Animals patterns. Certainly don't attempt it in that little ocelot, otherwise you're going to be cutting yarn forever. But all I've done here is done longer strands, and then I've cut them and I've knotted them on the back of the fabric. Now, as you can see, it creates a very messy wrong side, which isn't a problem for um, amigurumi necessarily. So don't do it for things like hats. Obviously, this would not be a desirable technique on the inside. Also, I wouldn't do it for small animals, like things where you've got a maximum of 40 stitches in your round. I wouldn't worry about doing it for that. What I would recommend it for, however, is big projects like the giant tiger head. I can't even get him on screen, he's so big. Do you see this big um, chunky here? I'll show you the picture of him so you can see it from the magazine. With a big project where you're going up to a lot more stitches, um, so this is the tiger head here. Um, so you can see the scale. I've just brought his nose in so you can see it. That's the tiger head there um, in relation to an arm. So it's a chunky project where you're going up to a lot more stitches. And what you're doing at a point like this is, do you see how you're round? You'll be leaving your cream here and then you'll knead it round here. So you're going to have a really big float that would go across your work on the inside. Um, you could, so your, old, your choices really are, is what you could do is you could um, hold it behind and catch it every now and again and if you wanted to, so it goes right the way across. Um, but what I would recommend really is this next technique where put yourself in a long float that goes all the way across to use it again and then just snip them down the middle and knot them. And that'll mean that it's lovely and tight and neat on your colour changes, but it's not going to interfere with your stuffing in any way through the middle. So I'll just show you what I mean there. So on to these next four. I'll be doing one, two, three. And then when I'm swapping back to my cream, leave my float nice and loose. I don't pull it too tight this time because you want to have a long enough end to be able to tie it on. One, two, pick up my camel. So I'm just going to stop there and show you what I mean by that one. And you see how we've got these nice long um, ends like this. On the back of the work what you would do is you'd cut the middle of that one cut the middle of that one and then knot these two together and that's going to give you a nice neat color change it's not going to unravel at any point at all and um, it can't go anywhere but you're not going to change the shape of what you're doing by having a long long thread going through the middle again i'd only recommend that if you're jumping a massive amount of stitches and obviously for something that's got stuffing on the inside because you definitely don't want to ever expose that wrong side with all those ends on so the final one I'm going to show you is kind of a halfway house um, between some others. And this is one that I would recommend if you don't enjoy the density of the fabric where with the second technique where you're holding it and crocheting around it. But you don't also want the really long floats. So this is a pattern that would be good actually for the giraffe. So in a pattern like the giraffe here, you've got a big expanse of stitches where you're jumping in the fudge. Basically, I'd say if it's six stitches or more, you might want to use this final technique, which is where what you'll do is just every now and again catch them. So do you see I've done two of my fudge and then all I'll do is pull my cream up there and work around it for that third one. And what it does is it means that, that you're not going to end up with the really long floats that go between them. Just catch it every now and again on the back. Um, this is every two actually that I've got here. Um, it means that you don't end up with any very, very long floats. You just keep them in and nice and neat and tidy, but it's not quite as dense as a fabric as if you work them all in like that where you hold it along right the way through. Um, and what I'd say there, where to use that would be just to catch it in the middle of here somewhere, um, moving on to the next one. 
Now, the last thing to show you really is how to read a chart, because this might be something that's totally new to a lot of you when tackling um, something like this, this magazine. And the most exciting thing about it is the fact that you've got a whole page of charts that are all interchangeable. Now, when you read a chart, all I want to remind you all is you need to start from the bottom and you start from the bottom right in order to read that chart. So you're reading it in the order that you go through. So the final thing to show you, which is going to really lock this mag unlock this magazine for you, is going to be how to read a chart. So the most exciting thing about this is you've got all your different animal print patterns um, in order to use on the different projects within it. So when you are um, crocheting a hat, you need to be able to understand how to read that pattern. So what you're going to do is you um, always start from, the, from here, from the bottom right-hand corner where one is, and you're going to be reading them... Um, so the first round, for example, would be all creams. Then on your next one, you'd be doing one, two, three, four, five creams, one black. One, two, three, four, five creams, one black. On the next one, you'd be doing one black, one, two, three creams, three blacks, three creams, and then two blacks to complete that pattern. And it is as literal as it sounds because obviously you're crocheting it in the same direction as that pattern. Just make sure that when you are working in the round, you're always going to be reading that pattern from right to left in the same direction that you are making your stitches. Um, I hope that helps you explain how to use the chart. Um, there are different rules if you're working a flat piece and again, different techniques if you are knitting in the round. So see the separate videos for those. These ones apply to crocheting using a chart um, in the round, which is for the hats that sit within that magazine.